like, wow, a double header, two shows in one day. It's been a while since we've done this, but we have a very special guest for you today. You've seen him before. You know him from Dr. McDougall's webinars, my webinars. He is a world-class concert pianist, but what you may not know about him is he's a really, really good chef. And I asked him to come back and make a recipe because it was so popular last time when he made the primavera pie. And he is going to make something with one of my favorite ingredients, at least one of my favorite whole grains, which is oat groats. He's going to make a creamy and savory oat, and maybe you'll even want to try it tomorrow for breakfast. So please welcome back Dr. Gustavo Tolosa. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Missing you, AJ. Yeah. It, now, it, it's winter where you live, isn't it? I am now in Argentina. I, you know, I should have been, I should be there because I live part of the time in Argentina, part of the time in the U.S., but when this all started with the pandemic, um, the airports closed down and I'm in winter now and it's like 28 degrees in the morning. So uh, it's very different. Oh my yeah. God, here it's been like about 109 every day. I can't imagine how cold it is. It is, well, I'm up in the mountains so that makes it colder, but yeah. It's, well, it's, that, well, a, a savory oat dish would be perfect for cold weather. Well, that is why I was, um, it's, you know, I, I think it's so interesting how our, our taste buds change as we continue our, our journey through the plant-based world. I, I used to love my oatmeal with fruit and like you used to say, more like a dessert, but now I, that it, I, it doesn't appeal to me as much. And sometimes that's what I eat if I want something sweet as a snack or something, but I want something savory most of the times. And so being cold in here, um, I uh, adapted a recipe from Jane Esselstein. And that's what I'm gonna share with all of you because it's, um, there's one, drawback to this recipe is that you're going to get addicted to it <laughs> and uh, uh, you might like it too much. But, well, that's uh, okay. I can't wait to learn how to make it. I always tell people, you know, if you, if you don't have a problem eating fruit and oats, eat it. But a lot of people, it's just not the ideal breakfast for them and to start their day in a savory way. And I love the idea of using oats savory. People don't think about how good it's going no, to be until they no, actually no. try it. Not only using the oats, but also so already including your, your greens for at least for uh, your two servings of greens with the oats. So this is what I, the, my, uh, to save time, I, it's already cooking right here next to me in the instant pot. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna show you the ingredients and talk a little bit about it. Then I'm going to play a piece of music for you all. And, uh, and by then the oats will be ready and I can show them to you. And Sounds good. Hey, tell us a little bit about, you know, I, I heard you're doing a fun little book club based on one of my favorite books. Well, actually, you're doing the Starch Solution, right? My favorite McDougal book would be Maximum Weight Loss. But right. tell, tell, how's that going? What's that like? Well, I, I, it's very fun. So every Saturday, it's been two months already. Every Saturday, a group of people, we get together online and we read uh, one or two chapters and discuss it share recipes, we ask questions, and uh, we're finishing uh, pretty much this Saturday. It's uh, the chapter 13, and the following Saturday is the end, and then we're going to start a new book by Dr. McDougall, either the... the um, maximum weight loss? Maximum. I, I yeah. was going to say ultimate. Well, it's maximum. sort of like instead of Bible study, it's like McDougall it's study. <laughs> Right, exactly. I think it's more fun. I yeah. don't know. Do you think he knows you're doing this? Because I would imagine he'd be very honored. I think so. I, I mentioned it to Heather. Um, so I, yeah, my, she, they know. So, and I, it's been wonderful and uh, we're going to continue it. So look what I have here. It looks like brown rice, but these are whole uh, gro groats. And I had never seen it until like two months ago. I had always seen the steel cut oats and the uh, you know whole oats, but this is how this is how it comes out of the plant. You know, so you can't get any more unprocessed than this. So this is pure fiber. Uh, what I do here, I have two cups of groats in this. So th that's the main ingredient that you want to put in the instant pot or if you're gonna cook in, in the regular stove. But what I do, 
premiere is I let them soak for the whole night. So I put them like right before I go to bed, like usually 10, 11, I put them in water. And then in the morning, uh, it takes less time to cook and they have absorbed water. So this is, these are the growth oats, um, which I think the, the way that we're going to prepare it, it turns out to be uh, more like a risotto, which I love risotto, but you know, risotto has uh, power and, and it's not as healthy as these growths. Um, so that's one ingredient, the one cup of growths. This is one cup, sorry, I said two, but this is one cup. Um, then I put four or five cups of water and or vegetable broth. And this is one cup of, um, actually this is more, it's one and a half cups of mushrooms that I have chopped. This is gonna give it that earthy, um, you know, taste that it's gonna make it also smoky because you can put smoked paprika uh, as part of your spices or you can put a couple of drops. Um, I don't use it very often, but every now and then I use the liquid smoke. And, uh, but if not, you can use the smoked paprika. And um, if you don't like mushrooms, you might wanna try the uh, Brussels sprout. I don't know if eggplant might work. Maybe zucchini that is grated might work as well. But I love the taste of the mushrooms. So that's one cup of groats, one cup of mushrooms, then uh, you need to put some nutritional yeast. That's optional also, because I know that some people uh, cannot have it, but I put about five or six tablespoons of the nutritional yeast. And then you wanna use turmeric, about um, one, a half of a teaspoon. You wanna use, um, garlic powder and onion powder, one teaspoon of each. And uh, AJ, I think I sent you the recipe, but uh, I don't know, people can get it. I don't know if they can get it from you, but if not- yeah, It's actually, so we have what's called show notes. And you may okay. not think they're there, guys, if you're watching live, but I promise you're there. I type them and then afterwards on YouTube where it stays, it, it's really there, it's there now, even if you can't see it and it'll be there as long as the video's there. So it's- Okay, yeah. All right. All right, so that's all of those ingredients that I mentioned, the oats, the water, the mushrooms, the nutritional yeast, the turmeric, the onion powder, the garlic powder. And then I love to put two cups of kale that is chopped or spinach, any greens, because that's where we're going to include the greens uh, in, the, in our morning. And that, is what goes in the instant pot for five minutes. If they have soaked all night, you only need five minutes. If not, you would need 15 minutes. And if you cook them on the stove, you're gonna need 20, 25 minutes. Um, so, this, you're gonna see how creamy they come up. When they come out of the instant pot, I put them in a big bowl and I put more fresh uh, kale on top and I put some chopped fresh tomatoes also. So you know, that, might be, you know what I was thinking? It, 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 in maybe instead of, or even addition to the chopped tomatoes, what about sun-dried tomatoes? Sun-dried tomatoes, you love sun-dried tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, but before I forget, people are asking how they join the book club. Is it too late? No, it's not too late because uh, we're going to finish the Star Solution in two weeks, but then we're starting we're going to start the book by Dr. McDougall, the, the uh, world's um, best diet. I know that's not the actual name of the book. Um, uh, the, the greatest diet on the planet or the healthiest diet. diet on the planet. Exactly. And then after that, we're going to do the maximum weight loss. So yes, they can, um, they can go to my Facebook page and there's a link there, but if not, I guess um, I didn't think about that. So they could email me and I'll send them the link if they want. I don't know if you can put AJ, my email. Or I sure can, and I know it. I'll put it in right now. Or I can send you the link and you can put it in the video or something. Okay. But okay, very good. Um, so I'm going to let that cook. It has another five minutes or so. How about if we put some music now and 
then come back. I try the oats, I show them cooked. Then if they, anybody has questions, and then I have a little surprise that I'm gonna share with everyone for Sunday. Absolutely, but I gotta tell you, cause she'll get mad if I don't. Linda Middlesworth says, hello. Oh. She uh, loves you so much. Linda, oh, my sweet friend. Thank you, thank you very well, much. Bonnie asks if Gustavo does webinars and actually he, I believe he does. He's gonna talk about them when he's done with his uh, presentation. Yeah, okay, very good. So I'm gonna take you uh, with me, let me, I don't know if it, if Jay, if we can uh, uh, stop the video so that I don't make people sick moving the camera. Is that possible? I, I don't think you, uh, you can turn your camera off, but I don't want to stop the video because that's no, not the stop the video. Um, I, can, you can, I can, you can turn, turn your off camera the... off for a minute and I'll talk okay, to you. Let everybody. me turn it off that way. No, sure. you're that's okay. okay. Leah never had oat groats. Well, I think if you like rice, Leah, I think you'll really like oat groats. They're very toothsome and hearty. And they're, I, I just think they're really delicious. I think you should give them a chance if you haven't had them, especially. And all right. So I'm here at my piano. And um, I have two actresses that are my fave, one of my two of my favorite, uh, Judy Dench and Maggie Smith. And uh, they uh, made a movie that it's just beautiful. I really recommend it to everybody. It's called Ladies in Lavender. And um, it's beautiful. And one of the beautiful things about the movie is the music. So I thought it, you would like it. To me, it's just a heavenly kind of music and uh, I wanted to play for you. So here it goes.
I had a nun. I got people over here that are clapping. You probably can't hear them because I'm wearing headphones. Yay. Well, people, my husband. Okay, it's not people. <laughs> that was nun. beautiful. Well, thank you. That was fun. Do you still sell that CD I bought a long time ago where you were playing at one of the con uh, concerts somewhere? Oh, yes, yes, I do. Yeah. I, I recorded a video, I recorded a CD that has tangos and music from Argentina. Exactly. Yeah. Linda wants oh. to know if the, mu the movie you recommended is on Netflix, Lavender Girls. I I don't I'm not sure to tell you the truth I I love it so much that I bought the actual DVD and um, and I watch it often I just love it so but I it's a, it's one of those movies that everything is just beautiful the photography the story the music the 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 costumes everything so I really recommend it and the most famous violinist Joshua Bell plays that violin like, like an angel, so. Wow, I love those, I love both of those actresses. They're two of the best. Dina oh. says, that Gustavo is so talented, so nice of him to play for us. And oh. what, as Sherry says, what a treat this is. And I know live from Argentina, I mean, come on, who does a live show yeah. on YouTube with, with guests from Argentina? Come on, we are really special. Well, I have to tell you something that I've been wanting to do now for a long time. I wanted to, to, to pair up food with music. Because, you know, those are my, my two passions. So um, I'm, I have put together some recipes and each recipe is going to have a different piece of music that goes with it. And I'm going to do that on Sunday as a live webinar where people can cook with me. They, can, they will be able to be in my kitchen and I will send them a list of ingredients ahead of time. And, but they're not gonna know what they're going to make. That's gonna be a surprise. But they, they will, they're gonna have the, the, all the ingredients. And so we're gonna cook together. And then after we're, we're done cooking, uh, everybody can be eating. And I'm gonna be giving you a mini concert of the music that goes with each, with each recipe. So well, that's that's amazing. And and I don't want to spoil the surprise, but Gustavo did show me the recipes just so I because I would wanted to feel comfortable about promoting them and they're all perfectly compliant or if there's something that isn't, it always can be made. But that is such a great idea to combine two of your big loves, music and yeah. cooking. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, if you want to join me, um, I don't know if you have the link. Basically. Yeah, I put it in. I'll put it in again. Colleen said she's going to be there. So that'll be nice. Wonderful, wonderful. So the uh, oats are ready. So I have put them here. Actually, I have a helper. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Richard he is here helping me. So Hi, Richard. You know, I was wondering, how can I combine my two loves cooking with dogs? I mean, that because every time yeah. I have Bailey in the kitchen, people are like, you didn't wash your hands. And I'm like, well, I'm the one eating it. So... <laughs> That's that, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you, we have to find you a way to combine your love of dogs with, uh, with food. <laughs> All right, so look everyone, this is so yummy. Look at that. It's like risotto. Oops, sorry. It looks exactly like risotto. Look at the creaminess. And so that, there's the greens, but because I want to have more greens, I add more kale. This is just fresh kale. Oh my God, I always do this show, like it seems right before a meal time, and you guys, that looks <laughs> amazing. It, look, it really and does look so creamy, like you have cheese or butter in it. it I know, it, it really, it's like too good. You, you're, you feel a little bit guilty, actually. Oh, I need the thing, honey. I need a, a towel. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Are you there? Yeah, I'm just gonna answer a question from Susan P. How about some plant-based dog food? My dog can't eat animal protein. Well, you're in luck in two ways. One, because Linda okay. Middlesworth, the owner of V-Dog is watching and I'm sure she'd be happy to answer any questions. And two, next month we have Sinai Suzuki on who actually makes vegan dog food and wrote a book on it. So uh, Bonnie, you mentioned that as well. That's, that's on my radar, so thank you. 
And I actually do know how to make plant-based dog treats, but it has oil in it. And I wonder, is, I mean, I don't need oil, but uh, I wonder, is oil okay for dogs? I mean, is it? I got it. You know, I'm trying to get a veterinarian on actually. I'll make myself a note yeah. to ask Dr. Pilch again to come on. It would be fun to have my own veterinarian from my home. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here it is. It can be, it cannot be any creamier. Oh my God. It looks mm. so good. It really yeah. is. If you guys have a chance to try oat groats, even if you don't try this recipe, I think, you know, what, you know, people are like, oh, they're expensive. Yeah. I don't know where to find them. Well, that's, it's really worth it. It really is. I wish we could get oat groats to be more mainstream. It's worth it. You know why? Because you need a little bit. They expand so much and they fill you up so much that you, um, you don't need to use a lot of it. So I hope that everybody will try it, that they will enjoy it. It's one of my favorite meals now, and um, it's just full of nutrients. And I learned recently that mushrooms are the only plant that actually has vitamin D. I, I didn't know that. Um, interesting. So it's very interesting because if you live in an area, I learned it from the, um, uh, what do you call it? The committee, the physician's committee for- um, mm -hmm. Do you miss living in the United States? I mean, I don't miss living in Los Angeles, but I'm still in California. Yes, I know, because when I am ready to be there, I just take a plane and I go there. <laughs> and uh, I still have my place in Dallas. So I, you know, I just um, go back and forth. But this is the longest time I've been in Argentina because of the situation. Um, yes, once you live in two countries, when you're in one country, you miss things from the other and vice versa. And it's like, well, just. <laughs> That's funny. Aubrey says, can you make your dish with steel cut oats? Oh, yeah. Yes. I forgot to mention that I am using the groats because that's my thing now. But um, the recipe that Jane Esselstyn made had um, steel cuts. Oh, very nice. People are asking, what time is it now in Argentina? It's 8.30 p.m. Oh, it's nighttime. Oh, yeah. Well, it good. gets dark at six, at 6 or so because we're in winter. And uh, right now it's like 35 degrees and um, Fahrenheit. And uh, in the morning it's maybe like tw in the 20s. So it's kind of cold. <laughs> yeah. Have you found any other plant eaters in Argentina? Or is oh, it yes. a, me a meat heavy uh, country? It's becoming a big trend, a big trend. It's just that they, they don't know a lot about yet about the starch and about limiting the oils and the, you know, they're using a lot of the uh, processed vegan food that, uh, that we don't, you know, or we, uh, yeah, we don't use it. But yeah, yeah, more and more Argentines are quite health conscious and they don't want, uh, and mo most people are trim, although there's a lot more overweight people than let's say 10 years ago because the American, uh, I guess, uh, this, the standard American diet has appeared here as well. But in general, isn't Argentina a kind of a meat heavy country? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it is. So, um, but now, as opposed to when I was little, because I grew up in Argentina, I don't know if people know that, but uh, now you do have a lot of options. Before, many years ago, that was the, the thing, you know. And because I'm in, the, in a town that is small and it's up in the mountains, there's a lot of fresh organic fruits and vegetables in every block. There is a vegetable store. And so it's, um, it, for me, it's very easy to, to eat healthy, although I miss Trader Joe's. <laughs> I yeah. love Trader Joe's. I'm trying to get them to let me film there so I can do a piece because a lot of people do those things where they do the haul and show it. I would rather just show the store how great it is. So I'm in negotiations with them to do a, a video there and I said uh -huh. I can come before they open because they let me do this when I was in Sherman Oaks, but I'm kind of new here. So yeah, that's it's so funny because nobody knows who I am in the desert. I've been here a year and a half, but <laughs> if I do get recognized, it's always at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. Yeah, those are the two. The two well, places, yeah. And then, you know, I've been getting into Sprouts lately because there's never a line it's in it's I a know. store it and, is a and sprouts has that salt-free uh, mustard 
Yes. And they also have, they make a salsa that's salt free in the refrigerated section. That's quite mm -hmm. good. So yeah, I yeah. like, and even my local Winco, I, you know, when I first moved here, I was a little bit of a snob, like I'm not going to shop at Winco, but when the sheltering began and it was the closest store and it was the easiest one without the lines, I'm like, they really have a lot of stuff and even a lot of organic. And they're pri like that tea that I like, that's Dr. Lyle's favorite. It's called good earth, organic, sweet and spicy, caffeine free. It's like $2 and 88 cents at Winco. You can't beat that. And it's like, no. Whole Foods, it's like triple there. So, so yeah, it's, 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 it's all good. I don't know how people live though, without a Trader Joe's. I mean, I just don't. I'm so. Well, confused. I have had to learn it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose if you can get the Hannah yams or the Japanese sweet potatoes, it's probably doable. Yeah, 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 you can. And, and I brought all my cookbooks and mm -hmm. things like that. But mm -hmm. I am converting some people that don't know about this, about the food. So it's, uh, it's good to share with other people this new this way of eating. Do you guys have any questions for Gustavo? You know, I get, I get not necessarily emails, but like a lot of times on my YouTubes, people will say, I wish this was in Spanish. I wish this was in Spanish. So maybe you should be doing stuff in Spanish because I don't speak Spanish. Yes, yes. Well, let me tell you that um, Dr. Dieg, Dr. Ponyman from New York and I have started a Spanish speaking um, group and we have our own website that is called plantemus.com. And it's in most, it's all in Spanish, but it does have a section in English for those of you that want to go see where we post the upcoming webinars, but it's plant, like, you know, like a plant and then uh, E-M-U-S, plantemus.com. So if you know anybody that speaks Spanish and you want them to, um, to learn more, we have recorded webinars and we every now and then do a, a free webinar. Did, did you ever get in touch with the Spanish speaking doctor that I interviewed that yes, I wanted? Yes, yeah, I did. Thank yeah. you. We're going to meet next week. So that, that's meet right. in person or? No. Oh, we yeah, because she's, yeah, because <laughs> I'm interviewing her again next week. She's really, really a nice lady. Very good. Yeah, so, yeah somebody's saying maybe a Spanish lessons. Maybe maybe you can do like, a, instead, in addition to a book club, like, an, uh, like a conversational Spanish class. Well, you know, this has been very fun for me because Besides cooking, which I love and sharing this, uh, a few times I have mentioned that I still give piano lessons online. So I've, I have like two or three students that have come out of these webinars and now I am teaching them piano. So that's, that's uh, fun. And so now my next project is, I guess, is gonna be teaching Spanish. That would be amazing. Did I ever tell you the story of how, what happened when I was trying to learn Spanish in my forties? No. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. I'll tell you, this is, it's embarrassing, but I think it'll be a good laugh for everybody. Before I tell the story, I just have to remember, cause it's been years since I, when I got my job at the restaurant, I was a pastry chef for five years and all the staff in the kitchens and the, the wait staff too, everybody spoke Spanish. I'm literally the only one that doesn't speak Spanish. Right. But in the main kitchen, they didn't speak English. So it, them, the, 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 the cooks and the chefs. And so I went back to college, to Valley college to take, I uh, wanted to take conversational Spanish, but you couldn't take it until you took Spanish one and two. So I enrolled in Spanish one and I thought I was doing pretty good. And before I go on with the story, tell me, how do you say I am afraid in Spanish? Tiene what? How do you say it? Tengo, te, tiene miedo. Oh, tengo Thank miedo. You. Thank you. Okay. I just have to remember that because this is important to the story. So listen up guys. So I'm thinking I'm this big shot because I know a little bit of Spanish and I just got an A on my Spanish test. So I went into uh, uh, my kitchen for the pastries was separate, but sometimes I had to go into the other kitchen, maybe to get a pan or whatever. So I didn't interact that much just because we were doing different things. So the main chef did not speak any English and I come in, he goes, como esta senorita? And instead of just saying fine or, you know, bien or whatever, E2, I wanted to show off my Spanish. And on that particular day, my dog Ginger was very, very sick. And so I was trying to, I didn't, couldn't think of the words. I was trying to articulate that I, I was scared that, you know, she might not do well. So uh, in, in the verb in Spanish, tienes, so you're saying I, I wanted to say tiene, tienes mierda, right? Miedo. I, mierda, right? So instead, yeah, but, it sounds, but it sounds like a bad word. Yeah, well, that's what I said. But realize at the same time, I was holding an empty bowl because I was trying to get some beans to eat. And I go, tienes miedo? Tienes miedo? <laughs> and the, they're looking at me and they're laughing and they're like, I'm like, 
What? And then like I, I, for five years, that's all. Every time they saw me, that's what they said. Quien es miedo? So for those of you that don't know what those two words mean, look them up. But that's when I pretty much stopped speaking Spanish. So <laughs> it was very yeah, embarrassing. That is yeah. funny. Yes. Yeah. Funny and embarrassing. But that's what happens when you learn a new language. You know, I, I had my stories when I was learning English and now I'm learning French and I have, you know, it's, it's always... You just have to just go with it and, and speak and hope that people are going to understand that you're making mistakes. That's my little Spanish story. You guys have any more questions for uh, Dr. Gustavo Tolosa? Well, thank you, AJ. I really appreciate your, uh, your chance to, uh, to visit with you and, and talk with people. Absolutely. Here. Let me let talk talk one more time about what they're going to get on Sunday. And yes, you guys, there is a small fee because it does take a long, long time to produce webinars. I can tell you that because we've done it. It's not just the little live stream. There's a lot of editing and things go into it. So I want to talk a little bit. I know you're not going to tell the exact recipes, but maybe yeah, on yeah. like, is there an entree? Just, like, oh, yeah. I'll just give you a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, I really like to do 98% of what all I do is all free um, but every now and then this is the second time that I charge I charge a small fee this is ten dollars it's just because the pre-production is hours and hours and then the, the post as well but um, yeah I'm going to send everybody the list of ingredients and we're going to make six five depending six probably recipes and it, there's going to be um, a very unusual and delicious salad with some uh ingredients that make it unique. And um, then there is a menjunje, which is a word in Spanish that I like, um, but I can't tell you what it means. I'm gonna to have to tell you on Sunday, but it's, um, um, it's, 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 let's say that it's a very versatile recipe that you can eat for a few days for lunch, breakfast, dinner, and it's full of starch and, and, it's, and it's full of uh, nutrients and greens and it's gonna be very yummy. And we're gonna use that recipe to make some potatoes in a way that maybe you haven't tried them before, but if you like crunchiness like I do, I just love crunchy stuff. These are gonna be potatoes that you're gonna bite into them and they're gonna be crunchy and inside they're gonna be creamy and soft and they're going to have the stuff that we made in the first recipe. And then there's gonna be a simple dessert that I think you're gonna love because it can also be a snack. And then one of the more um, unique uh, recipes is a, um, a kind of a dip that is, uh, has its origin in French, in France. And um, I think people are gonna like that too. So, and then I'm gonna pair that what we make with different composers and we're going to have fun talking. That sounds just like such a unique and fun way to spend a Sunday. Bonnie says, what kind of doctor are you? I said, I think you were a doctor of music, but I think maybe more you're like a doctor of starch. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I do have a doctor. Yes, I have a doctor in music from the Eastman School of Music in New York. And then my Facebook page, I called it Dr. Starch because it's a funny way to say it because I love starch, of course. And, um, but yes, I'm not a medical doctor, so I cannot prescribe pills, nor would I want to. Right. What was the name of the song that you played from Lavender Ladies? Oh, what, no, that is, it, the, the music is called actually Ladies in Lavender. Ladies in Lavender, it's very so beautiful. If people go to YouTube or Google and they type Ladies in Lavender music, they're gonna, find the videos with some beautiful images and the music. Great. Yeah. Crystal wants to know, will they get the email of the recipes before or after the webinar? The ingredients they get before because they have to have it ready. And I give them directions as to how to have them ready so that the webinar will flow. But the recipes themselves, you're gonna get afterwards because I want it to be a surprise. That sounds like a lot of fun. A lot but of fun. you may be able to figure out the recipes by looking at the ingredients, but I think there are some mysterious things there. <laughs> yeah. Now, do they sell Instant Pots in Argentina or did you have to bring yours with No, you? I brought, well, they, they do sell, um, you know, pressure cookers, uh, very similar, but not the, not the brand Instant Pot. And I brought mine from, from the U.S. 
question, are the recipes easy? They are because I like, every now and then I like to make an elaborate recipe, but if not, mine are, yeah, they're usually easy and they're uh, transformations of familiar stuff that people like. So that's kind of thing. Linda says, what time on Sunday? It's at 1 p.m. Pacific. It's nice. going to be 5 p.m. for me. So for me, it's going to be almost dinner time. Well, I don't know if you can do this, but Dina says, can you play another song? That might be a nice way to like say, you know, kind of say goodbye to everyone for sure, thank them for watching. Sure. Okay. I, I, I can because I'm preparing a recital that I'm going to do online in a couple of months. And so I can try one more thing. And then I'm going out to have fun on a Friday night. So with some friends, but I have pre-eaten so that I don't have to eat bad stuff. <laughs> okay, let's see. Quieren una, quieren una cosa más here. Let's see, I'm going to play for you probably something that you've heard and it's called Claire de Lune or Moonlight by WC and um, I hope that you will enjoy it.
That was so beautiful. Thank you. You guys should take the webinar Sunday just for the music. Who cares about the food being serenaded? That is beautiful. Thank you so much, Gustavo. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have a wonderful chef named Rashid, one of the very first raw food chefs, but he doesn't use oil or salt or a lot of fat. He's going to be teaching us how to make a bunch of different soups from just fruits and vegetables. These comments, bravo, mesmerizing, beautiful. People love oh. your music. Well, if you love his music, you'll love his food. So sign up for his webinar Sunday. I'll post the link one more time. And thank you again. Anytime you'd like to come on, cook, sing, cook, sing at the same time. I mean, not sing. Well, you could sing if you want, but play the piano. Sure. That would be amazing. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Hope to okay. see you tomorrow.